this idea is basically to kind of try and institutionalize that former part of the tracks as a kind of route within the city and to connect that's the station square here, to connect the station square to this uh, route, which then carries on out to be theoretically to the cycle up to this kind of landscape garden, if you like. It didn't make our life much easier in terms of the building because the site was already smaller than, uh, than we, we thought we needed. But uh, we somehow managed to squeeze it into, into the remaining um, slot um, uh, and left this kind of passage as a green, as a sort of linear park, if you like, um, which became the address for, um, for this building. Um, the, the, the kind of shape or this kind of loop uh, of the plan as, as kind of other reasons as well is to do with orientation really and kind of how you organize the building internally. I mean essentially this is a government agency so it has about uh, 900 offices and these offices in Germany is everything is very regulated, you get kind of rules for everything, these offices are, have to be a certain size and you all have to have a desk and a chair and a hat stand and a shelf and you know and it's like you, there's not much variation because it's all so limited that in the end you have to do a building if you want to be within your budgetary um, limits. You have to do a building with a central corridor, offices on either side, has a certain dimension. Um, you can't do much about it. And if you had just put the, the program into, um, into one kind of single building of that sort of uh, structure, it would have been something like this, approximately whatever, 800 meters long or so, corridor in the middle. Every 40 meters is a, is a uh, staircase, and so on. Uh, so a Kafka-esque uh, sort of um, idea of, of an office building. And of course, then the first thing we did was basically to, to loop it once in order to create a, a, kind of a courtyard or a field that we to call it a space which would uh, make orientation easier, so you can somehow have an option left and right. And then there's a kind of differentiation between an area which is more public, which is more dedicated to be open to the kind of this kind of green space and something that's more private, more to do with the institution. And then we basically bent the whole thing so it would fit into the site and that's more or less how the, uh, the plan came about. And that's also <coughs> uh, what happens when you kind of enter the building, this is this kind of public space. It contains uh, things like the lecture theater, which is also used by the city. It's this uh, situation here. It's a cover space, but this is all open um, from morning to night. Um, that's a kind of restaurant which is also open to the public. There's a library which is also open to the public, uh, and there's a gallery on the ground floor, of course. It's all open uh, to everybody. And then you more or less, when you pass through this, this is like a gate, like a big um, bridge to opening. If you pass through that, that's where you enter um, into the into the actual office. And that's also where the control. I mean, where you know the the kind of larger part of the public is being excluded. You then pass through that atrium, which is the main orientation. It's the, it's the way you kind of distribute in the building. You have these bridges, which let you go turn right or left. It's relatively easy to orientate yourself, and you can never, that corridor, you never have to walk more than half a distance between two bridges. Um, so that kind of way to orientate yourself, you have to find yourself within the building, to understand the building in a way. Also led to another um, structural thought of flexibility. We kind of devised a system where at the bridgehead we had kind of fixed institutions, so these are all special places. This is like where the head office is, where the kind of meeting rooms are, where kind of the center of different departments are and so on, and the space in between is generic if you like. Everything in between is just offices, flexible, they can be you know, changed and, uh, uh, both in terms of their layout and in terms of their spatial makeup, but also, of course, in terms of their use. But at the bridgeheads, you have a kind of fixed, um, a fixed um, set of spaces. It's sort of like a city where you have, um, you know, whatever, a market square or a church or I don't know what post office, which are sort of fixed points, and everything in between is rather more um, flexible. They then became also special architectural points. <coughs> There's also an issue about uh, using existing buildings again. There's one, one factory building that was left on the site, which is this one, which we did, which we did the model uh, as part of the library. There's a kind of um, 
But they do a piece which is sort of like a big raise, like a hand, which is just about just touching the whole building and creating a space, um, creating a space inside. As a matter of fact, we were thinking this was used to be a really beautiful old wall which had been penetrated many times. It's like a factory building where you know openings had been made and it'd be bricked up again and then be opened up again and so on. It's like a Roman ruin. We thought it was absolutely beautiful. And we convinced our client against their will to keep that and make it sort of this main feature of this space. And then, of course, while we were doing the excavations, the whole thing collapsed on us. And, uh, and so what you see now is like a cast. It's a concrete, uh, concrete version, but it's kind of...